They married up really, really well. We were already doing the financials in that space. So that was something I was kind of an expert in. When the opportunity to buy the local franchise came up, couldn't pass it up. Welcome to the Freedom Point Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about creating more time freedom through passive real estate investing. Passive investing in real estate challenges conventional investment wisdom. We are passionate about learning and sharing resources with others who are ready to transform their investing mindset. Quick disclaimer that I am not a CPA, attorney, or financial advisor. My thoughts and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for education and informational purposes only. My views are from being a successful business owner, entrepreneur, and real estate professional for over 20 years. I'm glad you're here. Now let's dig in. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Freedom Point Podcast. I'm excited for you to be here today. My name is Drew McWilliams, and I will be your host. Today, my guest is Brad Wolf. Brad, welcome to the show. Hey, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Super excited to talk to you. Let me give a little bit of background on Brad here, and then we'll we'll jump into some amazing dialogue. And we almost started to have a little bit too much amazing dialogue before I hit the record button. And I had to hit pause because it was just so many nuggets of wisdom here. But here's Brad's background. I'd love to fill everybody in, in the listening audience. You know, Brad has a background in consulting and a passion for helping businesses have healthy financials. Brad owns sourced bookkeeping and is a franchisee of in-home senior care company called Home Instead, based out of Columbia, South Carolina. Both of his companies have doubled in size in the last 12 months, and Brad's desire is to help others be able to do the same thing. Today, Brad is going to talk to us about how to align multiple businesses that work together how business ownership creates passive income, and maybe we might slip in a little bit of Michigan football because at the time of this recording, maybe his team just won a national championship. Just saying. Uh, Source Bookkeeping uh, is about five years in total that he has been running and has grown it from the ground up, is a bookkeeping and financial consulting company focused specifically on the in-home care industry. The Home Instead Company has been uh, in his portfolio for two and a half years. He purchased Home Instead when it was roughly $1.3 million annual in sales and has now grown it to $4.5 million annually in the last two and a half years. That's just amazing growth. Uh, Both businesses are uh, pacing roughly to hit uh, $5.5 million in 2024, time to this recording. And Home Instead is currently the second fastest growing Home Instead company globally. Brad, congratulations on all the accolades. What, how do you have time to sleep? Like what, what fill us in on what I might have missed from that amazing background and kind of what you're working on now. That, uh, have an extremely supportive wife who's been way too patient with me for the last five years, uh, working on both and growing the teams, you know, I think, uh, kind of skipping ahead slightly, but Having great teams makes this whole ship go. So very blessed on all those fronts that um, have great leadership in both organizations and really help them drive that ship. So trying to just keep the trains on the tracks, get out of their way and let them do what they do best. Yeah, well, uh, I think you said it both. And, and Brad and I, um, you know, we've known each other for a year or two now, and we have that entrepreneur entrepreneurship gene that uh, just seems to come out every time we get together and talk. But as far as you growing the team, I know that's something we've consistently talked about because I say the exact same thing. You know, that kind of dives into the whole, you know, how does business create passive income? You you have to have good leadership and you have to have the right people in the right seats. So it sounds like between all the different companies and growth you have, that is still something that's extremely important and strategic to you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think to your point, um, couldn't do two at, at one time if it weren't for having great leadership. And, it, and that's really the, where I put my time and effort in is finding the right leaders for these organizations that line up, uh, vision lines up, you know, mentality lines up, and then getting out of their way and letting them do what they do best. So um, it's probably been the biggest learning curve that I've had. I, I went from practitioner to leader. And, um, but you can see if, you know, you look at growth trends of both businesses, see the times that I've done that really well and seen the times that I've not done that as well, but it's how I've been able to, uh, 
to do both at one time and still have a, a wife and three kids who see me every once there, in a while. There you go. All right. So let's dive into kind of business ownership. I know that'll eventually dive into some of the other topics that we're going to touch on, but you know, which, which business came first and why? So I was source bookkeeping was the first one. I was actually working, running an in-home care company, um, doing in-home senior care. And we had these group of owners that were around us, um, other, other organizations, and we would meet a couple times a year and talk through different different challenges going on in the industry, different financial struggles, et cetera, and really became known as the numbers guy. So when it came time for numbers, everybody would look to Brad and I turned into a side gig. I started doing a lot of their books uh, just off to the side, kind of free time, et cetera. So I'm still running the in-home care, doing their books to the side. And the momentum of it just took off to the point I left that position, started sourced, went full time in it, uh, made it a full time gig. At the time, I was living in Michigan, moved my family back to Columbia, South Carolina, where we live now, and um, ended up leading me into I reached out to the local homestead owner here in town and said, Hey, I, I love financials, I love in home senior care, I, I really love you know the passion for getting to serve people, but also from this financial aspect. So we have coffee and talk about it. And when we sat down for coffee, he said, you want to buy my franchise? And so by the end of the coffee, we had the number on the table, um, ended up buying it. It was probably not a part of the original plan, but it's an industry that I love, industry that you can go to bed at night and know that what you did that day made a difference in seniors all over your community. So they married up really, really well. We were already doing the financials in that space. So that was something I was kind of an expert in. When the opportunity to buy the local franchise came up, couldn't pass it up. Let, let's back up a little bit because as long as I've known yeah. you, I don't know the story. So you yeah. went out to coffee with someone trying to sell them on your accounting services. And by mm -hmm. the end of the coffee, you ended up buying his franchise from him. I had a number on the Is table. Is that really what uh, happened? Like that? That's you, 100%. You had no idea that that was going to happen coming out of that meeting. No, imagine uh, calling my amazing. wife, asking how the meeting went and saying, hey, you want to buy it? <laughs> it's just, that was a shocker. But yeah, no, it, it was, um, you know, kind of God's timing in that way that we just sat down. He was a great guy and um, he owned two of them and he lived in another state. And so it was kind of his side one. And he was really looking for somebody who carried on kind of his vision and passion for that market. So as we got to talking, uh, I guess he felt that in me, saw that in me in some way, shape, or form, um, and and threw out a number before he goes, I want to sell it, I want you to buy it, and here's my number. Um, I ended up getting him down just a little bit, but we were, we were within a, a stone's throw from that conversation. Wow, no kidding. Okay, and and what year was that, Brad, that that meeting happened? In that was uh, March or April of 2021. How about in October that? October of 2021, we we uh, officially owned the business. So it was quick. That's awesome. So here's what I would love to spend most of our time talking about. And it's really how your two businesses really align, right? I, I am fortunate enough, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs all the time. Um, in in I'll just a little bit of entrepreneurship 101 in a, the American culture, which is where all of our listeners are, are coming from in the American culture. We're very much taught for some reason you, you start a single business, you grow a single business, get it as, you know, it, it, as large as you can and you run it as hard as you can singular focused, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the Japanese culture on entrepreneurship, they have a completely different viewpoint in the Japanese culture. Uh, they actually believe in having uh, a bunch of different companies under a certain umbrella that have synergies that work together. And there's actually a Japanese word for it. It's called kiritses. Okay. I might be pronouncing a little bit wrong, but my, my, that's, that is my research. So kiritses is a group of independent companies under one corporate umbrella that work cooperatively to increase efficiency and reduce costs. So I feel like you have a lot of that going on right now with two companies that align with each other very efficiently, and you're probably reducing costs, and you're being able to see 
both sides of the spectrum so you know where those KPIs or key performance indicators are to be able to report back and to really like your mission statement to be able to help others improve. Am I, am I Absolutely. on the right page? Here? Absolutely. 100%. So I how do these, how do these companies intersect? How do they, how do they help one another? Let's dive into that. Well, a financial company, we focus on the in-home care industry. Uh, that's pretty much our bread and butter. We are in multiple different franchise networks and because we've really become known as experts in that capacity. So the positive is I get to practice what we preach all day long because I own a home instead and I get to show proof in the pudding of how this actually works. So when I tell you that this is a great idea, I can also show you it. So that's step one. I mean, it helps having both uh, the credibility that comes with that. When I can talk to an owner of an in-home care franchise or company somewhere in the United States, and I can pull up our stats and say, this is what happens um, when you do some of these things that we're talking about. Uh, we have stats that show that the, the in-home care franchises that work with us operate on about an 18% higher margin than their competitors. And it's purely, I think, 18%. Other, 18%. Wow. Having both knowledges, you know, the, the knowledge of the industry and the knowledge of the financial side so strong, I think, is part that leads to that. Um, and, and we can get into some other things that lead to that, but, uh, that's where I found the intersect to be is the credibility that it brings. And so we can walk into any home instead or any in-home care company anywhere in the country and provide a ton of, uh, not just financial credibility, but understanding the struggles that they have to deal with every single day. And, uh, it's been a huge asset really transparently. Yeah. yeah there is a, um, uh, another podcast host, I don't mind giving credit where credit's due, the podcast is called Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, and he always says, the riches are in the niches. I mean, talk about, you're doing bookkeeping for in-home senior care. Like, I thought I had a niche in the uh, 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 the education space that I'm in. You are really niche, niche down. So, I mean, I can see how you can very quickly become an expert in a field when there is you know, not a lot of options out there, right? Not only are you good at what yeah. you do, but there can't be very many other people that have your specialization. Would I be accurate? Well, you want to talk about a sexy business, Drew? Bookkeeping. I, I mean, it is just, it's as good as it gets. And then you want to talk yeah. about bookkeeping for senior care companies. I mean, the line is out the door of competitors who want to be in that space. Out the door. Uh, I say that, uh, you know, I know what my next business is going to be. That's definitely <laughs> the next sexy business to start for sure. I, I don't think, you know, the college kid coming up with dreams of, of starting a business or somebody, you know, listening who's 28 years old and is looking for their next adventure is thinking bookkeeping company in the senior industry. Um, right. And so we we fill the niche that fills kind of touches on both my passions. They mm -hmm. take care of people in financials and as you got into it, you kind of fell more and more in love with it. And the more that we niched down, we actually tried branching out in a couple of capacities and just never had the same momentum. And so we said, let's just double down on what we do. Let's only go after in-home care franchise networks. There's about six or seven big ones out there. We're in about half of them today. We said, let's just attack this market until we run out of market share, and then we'll, we'll branch outside. But for now, we're just, Singular focus, staying on, you know, keeping the train on the tracks with that one uh, mission in mind. So, so it's, it's I can easily see, you know, I've got my franchisor hat on now. I can easily see how you can get into the Home Instead brand. That's easy. I mean, you're in that network. I mean, instant credibility. Like th this should be like a layup. Yeah. How do you get into your competitors? Because I don't know, I would have a little of apprehension of showing my books to someone that works with the competitor. How, how does that conversation go? Not only do we work with some competitors, we work with a competitor in our own market here in Columbia, South Carolina, wow. uh, which is which is unique. They're, we've been fully transparent about everything. Um all the way across the board. And this is where I'll say this, you know, we really lean on, you know, I lean on my team for those. So there are certain, I'll have an initial call with a franchise network and say, hey, look, I do own a, a different brand. 
um, you know, usually some NDAs and different things that come involved. But I say, look, our team is going to run this and they're the experts. So you're not relying on Brad. I'm not in your books. I haven't looked at most of those people's books um, anytime, but they trust that we know the industry so well that we can cut off a segment of our team and make them dedicated to that brand. And we're fortunate enough that we're probably the only experts in the industry in the bookkeeping space. And so when it comes to financials, when it comes to what percentages should these franchises be doing, and they're pretty universal um, across the whole industry, we're it. And so um, it's led to a ton of credibility. The funniest though is again, the one that's in town, I sat down with them and said, look, I want you to know, I, I, I won't ever go in and look, but like I have access to your books and I, I own a competition and they're like, we trust you. And that was kind of it. And so the value that we could bring outweighed the risk that they felt they were taking. Yeah. What's in You said a couple of words I want to hone in on, you know, trust. You said a couple of times, you know, in the real estate investment world, I mean, we, we consistently say only invest with people that you know, like, and trust. And, and then that can really not be understated. You know, look at, look at someone's last, 20 years, you know, of, you know, their called their, their work profile, their business profile, friendship profile, like just look at them as a person and you can very quickly, maybe not quickly determine if this is someone that I want to know, like, and trust, right. Do do I want to work with that person or not? So uh, yeah. you easily check, check all of those boxes, my friend. Second thing I want to hone in on is you've used the word team multiple times. And we talked about this a little bit before uh, the recording, both of us being, you know, uh, owners and presidents of our own company. We consistently talk about team and how do we put the right people in the right seats? And this all delves back into business passive income, right? I mean, that is truly the goal, right? Uh, I know you and I both have young sons that that have travel ice hockey, you know, in their veins, and we've got to travel sometimes. So it's it has the great ability to be a business owner because we have that flexibility. Um, that being said, I couldn't have that unless I have the right team in place. Would you agree to that statement? 100% agree. And I think that's actually secretly uh, my skill set is, is I love financials, love senior care. I think secretly is finding those people, building up those people, growing them, you know, implanting, hey, here's kind of my vision and then giving them some room to operate to help get us there. And I think uh, it's a, definitely a strength I bring. No, I mean, both organizations are only as good as the teams that we built, especially at the leadership um, for example, with Source, um, have an ex home instead owner is one of them. And he was somebody who just he sold his franchise and he believed in the mission so much that he reached out to me and said, "Hey, can can I join you in some capacity?" He now runs it day to day um, mm -hmm. for the home instead. Have a gentleman who left the hospital world is a high up executive. He was vice president of a major uh, local hospital system here in the Columbia market and left because he believed in that vision. So my job really is just building that vision, putting that vision out there and saying, hey, here's where we're going and here's how we're going to do this and attracting those people to come join the team and then letting them lead the charge. Because if it were all dependent on Brad, we would have crashed in a ditch a long, long time ago. Uh, but you find those great people who are super talented and then you just give them the, the room to run and go do what they do. 100% uh, agree. With that. Well, uh, I personally... Uh, view great leaders by being humble and by you saying a statement of this would have crash and burn. I completely do not believe, but I also believe great leaders uh, have that humility to know their strengths, know their weaknesses and be able to get out of the way. So I uh, congratulate you on that. And I know you do a, an amazing job running your team down there. Thank so, you. all right, Brad, so let's get into kind of our, our, our last closing question, if you don't mind. This is one that I use for everybody. I would love to know what your highs, lows, and what you have learned along your career journey thus far in your life. Love it. Love it. For, you know, for us, the highs are the impact that we get to make on our teams. You know, seeing folks who have gotten to move into, you know, homes that they didn't think they could or just providing that opportunity for them financially, career-wise, 
uh, mission wise that so many folks, you know, the number one compliment I've ever been given was a couple of team members who said, I never thought I could do this. And you, you helped pull that out of me. And so those, those are the highs, you know, uh, those moments when, when you get that gratification of everything that we're doing means something to this person um, on that level. I think the lows are the opposite, uh, really transparently buying the home instead. Uh, we had to clean house. Uh, it was the, a culture that was not representative of what we wanted. And after about six months of trying to move that, uh, we had zero progress. And so we had to make some really, really hard changes. And those are never fun. You know, you go in, you don't want to be the known as, as the guy who comes in and cleans house. Uh, but we had to do that. That that was not a fun season, but we're better for it today. Um, and so those would be it. And then lastly, you know, you talk about the lessons along the way. I think, I, I think, you know, the the joke, my superpower, I, you know, I mentioned it, I think building a vision and, and drawing people to that, but even more than that, it's just consistency. And that is such a boring thing, but I always use this statement with our teams, but we're just water on a rock. We are just constant day after day after day. And we do that for one day, for five days, for eight days, for two years, for five, you know, we, we will get to where we want to go. And just being that consistent presence, my Number one skill set, um, always joke about, but it's just, I'm going to keep showing up. I'll be back here tomorrow. You ain't getting rid of me that easy. And when you have the good days, when you have the bad days, when, you know, everything looks like it's sliding off the rails or you feel like you're king of the mountain, just showing up the next day and, and doing it again. And so that's been my number one lesson, bringing it to our sons all the time. You have a great game. You know, you score a couple goals. You guys show up to the next game, man. Or, or you, you have a rough game, you know, and my son being a goalie, he gives up eight you got to show up again and you got to erase that memory. You got to learn from it, move on and show up again and then keep going. And so it's been one of my favorite lessons. That I've this journey. I love that. Well, Brad, thank you for all the lessons. Thank you for uh, telling us about your journey through entrepreneurship and business owner. Uh, and congratulations on uh, doubling both of your companies in the last 12 months. That is an amazing feat and uh, proud of all your accomplishments and Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. If our audience wants to connect with you to learn a little bit more, what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, so I'm actually a big LinkedIn fan. Uh, you'll find me pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, just search Brad M. Wolf uh, on there. And then gosource.com is our website for source. And then we're home instead in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, you can find us on any of them. So, Drew, it's a pleasure, man. I've learned so much from you over the years. Enjoyed our conversation so much that this was an absolute no-brainer getting the chance to just talk to you, pick your brain. Uh, I am not worthy. So thanks. Thank you for having me on. And it was a pleasure getting to chit-chat here for a bit. Absolutely. Well, Brad, thanks again. Freedom Point podcast listeners, thank you for joining us today. I hope you were able to get some nuggets of wisdom out of our conversation. And we look forward to you joining us next time. Take care. Thank you for hanging out with us today and for listening to the Freedom Point podcast powered by Starting Point Capital. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing said on this show should be considered financial advice. Before making any financial decision, please consult with a professional. This show is copyrighted by the Freedom Point podcast. Written permissions must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting. If you're interested in connecting, you can find contact information at startingpointcapital.com.